So this is continuing with the explanation of one, two, and three point perspective. We're just looking at a couple more examples of two point perspective here before I talk about three point perspective. And in this example, we can see two sides of the tower. We can't see the base of it, that's confused, but that means we're getting two point perspective. And again, holding up your ruler, you can see there's an angle here, an angle there, and on the other side of the tower, there's a, bit, there's a steeper angle because we're at a steeper angle to that right side of the tower. And the ridge of the nave of the church here, the roof here and here, are also at angles. And again, the nearest part of this gable is going to be higher than the further part. It's closer to you. Simple logic can often solve your perspective problems. And then, in this example, even though you think you can only see one side of this building, it might be one point perspective you're thinking. But no, you're actually closer to the left-hand side of it. You can even see a little bit of left-hand wall in here, which is relative to the main part of this building, this mill, before they get built on. But because we're up to one end, we've got two-point perspective. And so that shows in the chimneys here, where we've got angles, and in the roof itself, where, again, hold up a ruler, and you can see it slopes down to the right, as does the gutter line. It slopes down to the right. And there's a vanishing point a long way off to the right, because we're not at a big angle. We're quite squ nearly square on, so we have got a vanishing point. If you were square on, we wouldn't have a vanishing point. And it would be one point perspective where the one point is right in the middle of the building, basically. So that's a two point perspective. And then finally, let's show you a three point perspective. So this is three point where you're close to a very high building and you get verticals distorting. And the simple is, thing is that the top of the building is further away than the bottom. So you can see by measuring with my pencil one and a half pencils wide at the bottom, one pencil wide at the top. So it's not quite actually one and a half, but we're about 40% bigger at the bottom than at the top. So we're getting convergence. And basically all the verticals in this in this cathedral, in which the cathedral here, will go to a vanishing point right above it, where the roof is pointing. All these lines will converge to a vanishing point up in the sky. And the closer you get to the building, the greater the distortion. So when you want to give an impression of great height, actually three-point perspective is useful for distorting verticals. And there's an interesting point, actually, just coming back to my first example here of two-point perspective. If I could see the right-hand side of this tower, because I'm quite close to this church, there would be a little bit of distortion in it. This edge was in the middle of my vision, but because there's a tree in the way, we don't. So it keeps the perspective simpler. So if you get stuck, stick a tree in front. So that's one, two and three point perspective. And basically, all you need to remember, if you can't remember all the different factors, is if something's closer, it's bigger. So let's put our perspective into use. Let's do some drawing of each. In order to, to speed the video up, I'm not actually going to draw this again, but this one point perspective that I showed you at the beginning in the first video is basically lots of rectangles and everything is pretty much at 90 degrees because we are square on. I'm actually square on to the middle of the house here. So eventually, if one kept on going, you would get some distortion to left or right if there was more house to left or right. If you're painting a terrace of houses, you can get one, two and three point applying in the same study. I won't show you that complex example, but there's a one point perspective. So simple rectangles and actually what you've got is a vanishing point at your eye level in the middle of the building. So basically in the middle of this door, there's a vanishing point. And if I saw the balustrade going back into the house, it would make an angle like so. And the same would apply to any sides of chimneys that I see. So that's a thing just to watch out for, because you can have a one point perspective house, but you've got a big chimney here. The side of it would still be at a distorted angle. So there's a one point perspective. And I've got the same building in the photograph here at two-point perspective, because now we can see two sides of it. Even though it's hidden by a tree here, we can see the top side of it. And so everything starts to go off at angles. So you can see the left side of the building is all converging to the left, and the right side is converging to the right. And as I've explained in previous videos, the top of each chimney, the middle line, is the tallest point. So 
smallest point here. So in other words, if you're confused by the angles of the chimney, just remember the nearest bit you can see is going to be the biggest, the highest bit. Okay, so that's the distortion. I've got an example of that here. So this was taken at the same position where I drew this. Um, and you can see, again, just showing how to solve this, you don't need to know the vanishing points. Literally, if, you, if this building was in the distance beyond my sketch pad, if I held my sketch pad up to the building like that, I can check the angles. And you can see, this is another way, if you've got a photograph and you're already stuck, you can put a ruler on the photograph and line it up with your drawing. And do you see that balustrade is exactly in line, same alignment as my drawing. And let's go the other way, so the balustrade for this bit. I'll put a ruler on here and I'll just bring it across so it lines up with my drawing. And hey, presto, it lines up here perfectly. Now I promise you I did not copy this photograph, I drew that on the spot. <laughs> but I could have done the same from the photograph. And other little things to look out for here, you've got this porch sticking out from the building. And so there's perspective in here, and so the right side of that porch would go to the right vanishing point. Or it will just distort down to the right, so it's also going to a slight angle, like so. You can see this line here, here is at a slight angle. Okay, so here's another example of a building where I couldn't see all parts of it. And a lot of these problems came up when um, the artists coming with me on various locations um, studies recently found it very difficult to do perspective and they couldn't see the whole of the building. But again, by holding a ruler up, everybody was able to solve the problem and realise that even when they weren't square on to this building and they couldn't see the right side of it properly, by holding a ruler up we were able to get that distortion going down to the left on the gutter, on the ridge, and even the windows, very slight angles. And our eye level is here. So uh, across the pond we're getting reflections. And this is another interesting thing. If you ever do paint reflections, the great thing is that the reflections share the vanishing points of the building. So if I had a vanishing point plotted right over to the left, the ridge down here would meet the same vanishing point as the ridge up here. The same for this ridge to the right. I can't quite see the reflection of it but it would share the same vanishing point. So actually, that's simpler than you might imagine. Let's do some simple examples and draw some examples. So we've got one point where you'll literally just square on. I won't do that. Two-point perspective. Simple rule. Draw. And I'm going to go back to the, the barn, to, oh, sorry, the farm building to show you. Draw the middle line of your building, the vertical line that is, first. So this is where I'm going to do bay leaf. So I'm just drawing this line first. And once you've decided how big you're going to make it, let's say that's where the, the roof starts, you can actually use that height to gauge the width. To gauge the width. And in fact that height is more or less the same width, so I can put a vertical in for the far wall. This height one and just over one and a half. So I can take that line there and go one and a half to there. That's where the end of that is. So I'm not, am I drawing it at the same size? Not quite. I'm making it slightly smaller. So my eye level is down pretty much at ground level. So let's just imagine this is ground level and we have a straight line. So the next thing you can do, and again, you, this is a double check. If you compare the height of this wall, corner of the wall, with here, you'll see it's lower. By how much? Let's just work it out by comparing one to the other. So I'll just hold it still here. So that, and you can do this in front of a building or from a photograph, you can compare that height with that. And that is shorter. So by, I need to take it to there. So it's shorter by maybe 10%. So then you've just got to connect the two points together. You can do the same to this wall over here. Let's ignore the hedge that's in the way. And again, it's about three quarters the height of this part of the, of the nearest vertical. So it goes to there. So now you just connect that up. Do you see what I'm going? So 
we have got two point perspective without worrying about vanishing points. Yes, we've got a vanishing point way over here, way over here, but we don't need to plot them with this method. You can just compare the heights of each part of the building, connect it up, and we've got a hit roof here, apart from a little bit up here. So another thing, often people get confused by the angles of roofs, but this hip isn't quite going vertically, it's actually going slightly to the right. And again, by counting how high that roof is relative to the rest of the building, we can work out where it, how far up it goes, literally by comparing the height of the roof with the rest of the wall. So that's, that's a bit too high, fraction down to that point there. So then we can just literally join that up. And remember, this, there's a slight overhang on the roof, so we can just, just draw that there. Now, if you really want to use a ruler, let me, let me zoom in on this a bit so you can see. There we go. You can use a ruler if you want to, and you need to use a ruler to check the height. One of the problems with doing a two-point perspective house is where does the ridge end? Simple method of doing this is to again work out the height of the ridge ends, but also where does it intersect this wall? And it's about a third of the way in. So it intersects sits roughly on that line. And again, we can compare the height of that part of the roof or the whole of the building, if you like, from ground level with this height, and we get about three quarters. So we just get to this one, about three quarters across to here. So that's about there. Now double check that because it's very easy to, to get a, make a mistake in, in doing that. But again, we can now connect those two points up, and there should be a bigger slope on the ridge than the gutter line, slightly bigger. And then from this point, we've got an overhang here, we can literally connect that up and we get that angle too. Okay. And then it's a simple matter of, of doing the same perspectives, going off within. And don't forget to get the windows following the same lines, same angles as the walls, so that everything falls into a natural perspective. And then it's a simpler thing of you know, putting all the fuss and the detail into a building. That, that's not so difficult when you've got the main essentials in place. So basically plot the first vertical, work, use that to gauge the widths, plot the outside verticals and connect the lines. Simple way to solve a two-point perspective. And in this image we've also got a perspective on a, on a barn across here and you can just keep going with your perspective lines and follow the lines of the you've already established, follow these angles. So in other words, this angle pretty much it actually comes up slightly softer in angle than the, the gutter line here. But this little thatched barn, so the angles are all very forgiving anyway with a the thatch, they're not quite as critical. So there we are, so that bit goes over there. So you can you can build your composition very simply by doing things like that. Let me move that over so you can see so a little barn comes in. And let's do a three-point perspective. But let's do a three-point perspective. I'll do one down here. I'll make this one up. Let's have, if you've got a tower, actually I'll show you something that this relates to. So here's another angle on the church I used earlier. And I'm at the other end of it looking up. And here we've got a tower. So you've got a two-point perspective from the two sides, but we've also got vertical distortion, which gives you three-point perspective. So I'm just going to do a miniature version of that. Let's turn this paper around so you can get a bit more space on this. Right, so we're going to do this so again. Do the nearest vertical first of all. In this tower, this vertical is not vertical. It's actually doing this. So again, you can line it up to check. The right hand side of it is vertical because that's in the middle of my vision. So that's doing that. The left hand side is even more angled over here than that. And what they're all doing, it looks it looks strange, but actually it's what you would see. Your your brain tries to stop seeing it like this and tries to make sense of it, because your brain knows that these things are all horizontal or level. But in reality, it, things are distorted. Your brain sort of corrects it. So we have got 
And where's the eye level? That's a useful thing. If you actually look through all these courses of stone, the only, and I move my pencil through it, the only courses that are horizontal are literally down at this window here. That is horizontal. So that is another way of working out your eye level. Where do the bricks or the stones or the ridges or the roofs actually seem to be horizontal? And that's going to be where your eye level is. So our eye level is right down here. The ground is here. And so that gives us an eye level that all the other lines will distort to. So your vanishing points are going to be on your eye level. But you don't need to plot them. And interestingly, you can double check that that's the case, because I don't know if you can see it in here, but if I bring it closer, this eye level is also horizontal on the left-hand side of the tower here. So all the stones in there are, at that line, are horizontal. The rest of them distort. And we get a very high distortion. Let's just take this angle here and put that here. This is a huge distortion on the left side of the tower. Let's take this angle and convert it here and double, double check, line it up. You can use a ruler to double check. Actually, I've got it too narrow, this tower, so let's just bring it over. Let's just come over a bit more. For the height I've established, I'm not painting, not drawing it quite as big, nearly as big. So width-wise, it needs to come over to here. Let's bring that, other, that vertical to there. So that gives us two sides of the distorting. We've got a, let's continue this line down with the battlements are there. It just comes right down that, that these lines will converge and then a little bit perhaps further way down we've got a ridge that's not quite as angled as that, slightly flatter. And again, let's just line it up to check. We've got a gutter, comes in here. So this is the two point perspective. One side is going to one point, this side's going to another, but we're also going to get a vanishing point in the sky in this three-point perspective. One technique is to get a bit of old wallpaper. Use the back of the wallpaper so you've got lots of space and, continue and draw on your wallpaper or lining paper and just keep extending these lines and see where they meet. And eventually, if you've got a long enough ruler or maybe a piece of, spring, uh, sorry, a piece of string sorry, stretched out, you'll see that they'll all converge and meet at a common vanishing point. Um, now, because we can see a bit of this porch, this, we've got a buttress also coming out here, which doesn't correspond, unfortunately, to your um, vanishing points, because it's at an angle, that this top bit here, but the sides of it do. So we see the left side and the right side. So, and then we've got a window in here, we've got an arch, which is very tall and thin. And when you're drawing arches, by the way, just draw an overall rectangle in perspective and then mark off where the arch starts curving from and where, it, where the apex actually goes to. And then you can draw an arch like so, very easily. And then we've got the porch and the left side of the porch goes to the left. So we're going back this way and the right side if we could see it, it goes to the right. So we've got a porch doing this. And if I could see more of this photograph, we would get this sort of perspective on it. So again, just practice our arches. This arch sits on here. Let's draw a rectangle, perhaps distorted by perspective. Work out where the curve starts on both sides, work out where the arch meets the middle, and we get an arch. Now, and of course there, there are more arches within arches because you've got these sort of thick muddians to the window. And the same, the arch up here, draw a rectangle for the, so the, on the top, you draw a rectangle for the hole, and you notice the rectangle's following the perspective of the side. And again, it comes up a bit higher actually. We've got an arch that starts there. So you can get the, because it regular on both sides. You've got an arch, arch sort of within because of the, the way that the arch is set back into it. 
And then on the left side of the building we've got a very narrow arch here, higher up, so the, so the ledge of this arch is at an angle. That's just, oh, I didn't do it steep enough. Let's go back and compare it now a bit more so steep. There it goes up to about there. Again, draw a distorted rectangle in the perspective of the... Um, and then it's very narrow. So we need to just check where the arch starts. But again, if you've planned it in a rectangle, it makes it much simpler. So I'm doing this very casually. And then you can do the same with your battlements, because all the battlements would follow the same perspectives as the rest, and just divide it up into how many battlements it is. And then you'll see that the return on each battlement is going to the left, and the top of each battlement is going to the right, and the same in here. So that where you'll get these really steep angles, and it's these little details which will make your drawing totally convincing. I won't bore you with doing the whole of it, but you can see the principles. Three-point perspective, made simple, I hope. Two-point perspective, made simple. And then you can use the same rules to do features like bridges. And again, you think, well, you've got slopes and all sorts, but simple thing here is this is the highest point of the bridge. This point in the middle here, the left side of the bridge, rather. That side of the bridge over here is further away, so it's not as high. And in the reflections, the highest point will produce the lowest reflection, and the less high point will produce the less high reflection, and the lower point here. Okay, so it's lining things up. So here we are, a bridge over the river way, and it's all about, let's move it across so you can see, it's all about knowing how to gauge the height of everything, and then also how to gauge the angles for everything. So that's where you can again hold up a ruler and compare the angle of the fencing to the side. Here, with horizontal, you can compare the middle section. It actually is a slight slope. It's going down to the right because it's getting further away, and it's going down more here because it's on a slope as well. So you can apply your rules to paintings of all manner of complicated subjects. I hope you followed all that, but the simple rule is, if it's closer, it's bigger. If it's further away, it's smaller. Thanks for watching.